My name is Molly, and I am an INFJ Scorpio type four, youngest of five children. Molly, the person who talks about things. So, I have a lot of thoughts on typology, and I go back and forth between being obsessed with it and kind of um, neglecting it and just working on other parts of myself. Um, because sometimes the labeling can kind of get weird. I am hugely self-aware and constantly trying to figure myself out and also know um, a good bit about these different personality systems. I have a list of type 4 traits or qualities that I possess and I'm going to share those with you. If you can relate to them being a type 4 yourself or just a human who can relate, then wonderful. To start off, um, I care a lot about keeping it real, and I can tell when someone is not keeping it real. If someone's a phony or just like um, BSing me, I can just tell. And I usually don't let them in on that. I just quietly know that what I'm witnessing is not real. And then I, I don't enjoy it as much, because I enjoy when people are honest. And true. Um, and this applies to myself too. If I if I feel like I didn't represent myself accurately or um, acted fake or something, I'll feel not so hot about that. And um, I strive to keep it real in most settings and be genuine. But that can be difficult because I'm also trying to please people and adjust to different settings and sometimes I can't just own it in certain um, in certain atmospheres in certain environments with certain people mm. I am constantly working on myself and um, there's a section of on the Enneagram page for type 4 that really stuck out to me which is I'm so sorry. People are doing lawn work. Spring is coming. Spring is sprung. Um, so this is this is the section. It says, Fours often report that they feel they are missing something in the, themselves, although they may have difficulty identifying exactly what that something is. Is it willpower? Social ease? Self-confidence? Emotional tranquility? Right now, it's emotional tranquility for me, um, but I am constantly... Uh, trying to fill that void, and the void changes, and I'll re-identify the void, which is part of my NI that I feel does that. I'm always trying to figure out wh how I'm thinking, um, and how I'm processing, and how and what a better way to process might be. I find beauty in the sadness. I find beauty in the darkness. Um, sometimes I'm a bit too melancholic for other people's taste. <laughs> I get a little too dark. Um, can be pretty moody. And uh, the people who are close to me see that. Um, I don't like that. And that is something that I'm working on. Um, see, I'm constantly working on something in myself. Because I... And I think that's good to work on yourself. Because you can always be better. There's always room for improvement, but sometimes that can come with getting down on oneself for not being good enough, and so I also would like to work on telling myself that I'm enough while also working on A, B, C, D, E, F, J. Here are some things that have bothered me my whole life, and... Um, I feel like this is type 4 but it could be a whole plethora of things. I don't like being told what to do, and I never have. Um, my boyfriend is very careful with when he wants me to do something and how he asks me to do it. Because just being told what to do, um, I guess I'm very resistant to that. I'm very sensitive to words and wording, um, so... Yeah, I guess the way that someone asks me really makes a difference. But I have had, like, kind of an issue with 
authority figures, but I don't really stand up to them, but in my head I'm like, angst, angst, angst. I don't want to, sort of. I want to do it when I want to do it. Ugh. It's very unattractive, I think. Mm. Another flaw. <laughs> I've never liked when people copy my awesome ideas. Uh, they say that imitation is a form of flattery, but I think it's a form of annoyance. <laughs> when I was younger, I came up with a really cool signature, Molly, and the Y turned into this like heart balloon, and within the heart balloon I signed my um, last name. And uh, my friend copied that and did it for herself. She did Jenny and then did her last name in a heart, and I'm like, that was my thing, and now I don't have my thing, If you, and now you have it. Like, and there would be certain things like that where I'd start trends and not feel good about starting the trend. It's like, but that was, that was representing who I am, and you stole it, and now it's just a thing that people do. Like, um, those squeezy, um, where am I going with this? Uh, <laughs> those squeezy balls with the spikes. It's a toy. Um, in third grade, I, they had like gooey stuff in it. And um, yeah, they're these toys. They're like yo-yo things. I don't know. I had a couple of those. And then um, people in my class got them and stuff. And instead of like feeling good about that, I would sometimes just resent it a little bit like that was my thing I, I clinged to that identity that individuality um, also did really strange things like when um, that gooey ball I named it Gus Gus and when it broke and exploded um, I buried it in the mulch in the playground and had a ceremony with my friends because I thought that was hilarious and to be fair, I, I still think it's hilarious. Good job, third grade Molly. Third grade self. Um, but, so, there's that side of things, too. All, I've always kind of done strange things and found it humorous or fun. And that's very type 4. Type 4 cares about... Um, they want to be unique, and they like weird. They like things that are... Um, non-conformist and I yeah I suppose I've liked that since from day one and um, I see I always like looking back at the childhood because you see a lot of um, your core instincts when you look back like what what did I what was I drawn to and what did I do when I was young a couple other things I'll share since I'm being vulnerable in this video I rewrote uh, musicals and um, condensed them, made them shorter, and then directed them at recess and was pretty stern on being on time. I just wanted to write and create and um, make a thing with people. And so that was always something that I liked to do. I'd come up with an idea and I would do it. Um, another example, I brought books from home, I Spy Books, and... Um, <laughs> made barcodes with uh, paper and sharpie like fake barcodes and taped them to the books and then like put like due date stuff in and made this like weird little beeper scanner thing like out of paper and a red sharpie and then I'd uh, during free reading period I would check out books to people if they didn't bring their own books and so people would come check out books from my desk I had a library at my desk and they'd have a due date and everything, and I just, I just loved it. So that sort of commitment to this, to these unique ideas, and um, not caring so much what people around me think, and just doing the thing, is something that I've always had, and it's it comes in waves because I will care what people think, and I'll feel um, self-conscious at times to how I'm affecting people. So there's there's that as well. I have held 
grudges, and uh, I don't love that. If someone has said something that hurts me, it sticks with me for way too long, and I have trouble forgiving, um, which is something I would like to work on. But um, I remember everything that people say to me. Other things I might not remember, but if, if you say something that really impacts me, it's going to stick with me. And lastly, uh, nobody understands me. <laughs> this is something that I've felt a lot, and saying it sounds obnoxious, but it is a feeling that I've felt very, 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 very frequently. Um, I feel misunderstood and... I feel misunderstood and almost helpless to ever be understood. Like, fully. But I've settled, or I'm trying to settle for being understood in certain ways. Because nobody is going to love you the same as the next person. Everyone's going to love you in a different way. And so... I remember that when I broke up with my first boyfriend, I was thinking, no one's going to love me as much as him. But someone can. But they will, and, and they have. But they love me in a different way. And so there are different sorts of relationships you form, and people understand you differently and love you differently. And so um, trying to understand that and appreciate the relationships I have has helped me f from... Um, getting that angsty feeling of, and that really just sad feeling of feeling like nobody really, truly gets me. So, type 4 Enneagram. Um, very interesting. I love how it focuses on growth, and um, it, it is pretty negative. It focuses on a lot of weaknesses, but I like looking at my weaknesses personally because um, I'm constantly striving to be a better version of me. So being able to find the proper wording to, yes, that describes me, um, that can help me uh, on my path to uh, self-betterment. We can wait. If you're an Enneagram type 4, or an INFJ, or a youngest of 5, or a Scorpio, or a person who just relates to me, or feels, um, had some sort of enlightened moment throughout this, comment below. Um, if you hated this video, you should like it and subscribe, because it's opposite day.